Hello and welcome to another Cheeky Scientist whiteboard training video. I'm Isaiah and today I'm talking to you about skills that PhDs have that others don't. You're going to want to watch the whole video because I'm going to tell you about skills that you are likely not including on your resume, your LinkedIn profile, or during phone screens and beyond in your job search. Now when I was looking for a job, all I thought about was my technical skills. I was trying to transition out of academia into industry and I thought, oh wow, Western blotting, or oh wow, cell culture, or what are some advanced things that I was doing in the lab, right? I thought these were so important because I was living and breathing them every day. It wasn't until many years later I realized that employers don't care about this. They see you have a PhD, they know you can learn any technical skill. You either know the technical skill or you can learn it. What they don't know is the other advantages that you bring to the table, right? Things like uh, your ability to resolve conflict, things like leadership skills. Right? Those are the other types of skills that employers are looking for. They're called transferable skills. Most of the skills I'm going to talk about here are under the transferable skill umbrella, but you haven't thought about them and you're not communicating them. You don't know how to communicate them, what words or phrases uh, employers want to see, and so we're going to discuss those. The first one is accelerated learning. As a PhD, you are a doctor of learning. You're a doctor of philosophy. Philosophy means knowledge and the ability to ascertain knowledge. Ascertain, okay, or, or uh, learn. You're, you are a doctor of learning. It's very important that you understand that because most people cannot learn things quickly. And what we're seeing in industry is that uh, previous industry experience is becoming less and less important and your ability to learn quickly. Speed of learning is becoming very important. Think about it, if you're going to retrain them on the new processes, Okay, so learning, speed of learning is very, very important. Um, this is uh, the first thing you should be communicating on your resume, your LinkedIn profile, and as you're discussing uh, your, you know, during your phone screens, during your site visits, etc. Number two, logic and deduction. I'm explaining it that way so you know exactly uh, what that skill is. It's your ability to go from A to B to C, right, to, to draw conclusions, to problem solve. Now, when you're communicating this, you probably want to use that phrase, problem solving. Uh, what logic and deduction means is it the means uh, by which you're able to solve problems quickly. Most people can't do this. And more than anything else, logic and deduction, right, your reasoning powers, uh, is related to your intelligence. Now, you don't want to put on your resume or your LinkedIn profile, right, intelligence uh, as a key transferable skill, but you do have that. And when people see a PhD behind your name, they know that you're more intelligent. You have to break it down for them so they know that, that how that's going to help them specifically. Your ability to deduce, to reason, to conclude, to logically follow through on a problem to the solution that makes the most sense and then to carry out that solution is a crucial skill. Technical comprehension, number three, technical comprehension. So comprehending things quickly is tied to number one, accelerated learning. You can comprehend things technically very fast. Now most people, they see a uh, technical chart, they see an operations manual, right, full of uh, a bunch of technical jargon, their brain shuts off, right? But this is when your brain lights up. You understand uh, technical uh, procedures, you understand protocols, methodologies, you understand uh, the nomenclature that's used, and we're going to break that down further because it's related to other skills that you have. But your ability to, to comprehend things that are technical quickly, to learn new technical skills, is a very, very important skill. And we're seeing this phrase really pop out at employers right now, technical comprehension. Number four, related to that systems building. You've likely, as a PhD, spent a lot of your time following or creating or optimizing methodologies, protocols. Most people don't do that, okay? They don't break things down sequentially and go through them, yet in industry, you have to do that, right? And in the industry, there's something called a standard operating procedure for every activity that happens at the company, okay? That standard operating procedure is just a protocol. System or skill sets. Five, data analysis. We don't even think of this as a skill as a PhD. It's almost like a given to us. You collect data, you analyze the data, you draw conclusions. That an analyze, uh, analyze step is very, very important. You need to showcase this to employers. You can go through large amounts of data and you can find trends. You can find outliers, okay? You can find problems in the data. You can find solutions in the data. Most people don't, can't do this, nor do they have the patience for it. As a PhD, you do, it's crucial. 
we, we're seeing positions open up at the largest companies around the world that used to not hire PhDs for PhDs now. User experience analyst, data analyst, almost any company from Hilton to Home Depot has these positions and we're seeing PhDs get hired into them because of this skill. Number six, elevated vocabulary. A lot of people talk about written communication skills, oral communication skills, but what does that come down to? As a PhD, you are able to learn new vocabularies, uh, a new set of nomenclature uh, very, very quickly. And this is not just speed of learning, this is a specific type of learning where you're building up something. You're building up your vocabulary, you're building up the, the, the roots of words so that you can learn new words faster. You can go into any field. Okay, you see a lot of PhDs go into a completely different field as a postdoc, completely different field as a PI. This is very valuable in industry. You can go into any field because you can learn the nomenclature, the vocabulary, which means you can write about it and communicate about it much more quickly than somebody else. Number seven, record keeping. Whether you've worked in a lab, you've worked as a TA, either way, as a PhD, you've at some point written a thesis. Okay, you understand the importance of keeping accurate records. Most people just do things and they don't record any of it. In industry, it's very valuable to record it because then you can pass it on. Right? So if you get promoted in a position in industry, the next person who's hired knows what to do right away because you kept accurate records. That's why that's valuable and why you should be communicating it. Number eight, second to last, information seeking. Okay, this is just a way of explaining your research powers to somebody who doesn't understand what research really is. You're able to seek information like nobody else. I'm guessing, as a PhD, you've had times where you've started going down a rabbit hole, you found a reference, you looked at all the references that were attached to that reference, you dug into those, you went to the library, looked at books, who does that anymore? Okay, you went, you went further and further and further and dug in to learn and to seek information so that you understood a topic. Most people don't do that, okay? They stop at level one. They get tired just looking for one reference. They don't even know to look for a reference. You do. This is a huge advantage and you have to communicate it. Last but not least, internal motivation. Now you might think a lot of people are internally motivated, but studies show that most people are externally motivated. They want external recognition, a trophy of some kind. They just want to get a higher salary. Of course, we're all about PhDs being paid with their worth, but most PhDs don't want to just get paid with their worth. They want to do meaningful work. They're internally driven to have an impact on society, a positive impact on humanity. Now you might think that sounds too, you know, up in the clouds, uh, it's not tangible enough, but it is. You're internally driven. There's a lot of studies that show that people that are internally driven work harder, longer hours, come up with better